9900 milliamp hours. I mean, screw Sony, screw Samsung, screw LG. Those guys and their hundreds of thousands of dollars of research and development and their stupid 3300 milliamp hours. Navi Buzz on eBay has got us covered. 9900 milliamp hours. And not only that, they came delivered with a charger for under £10. The question is, are they going to be utterly bollocks like the Ultrafires? Or are they actually going to be decent cells that have been exaggerated? Let's have a look. Well, it's hard to be unbiased. The listing said that these were in Glasgow, i.e. inside the UK. Glasgow's only 30 miles from here. But the return delivery address is clearly from abroad. I'll Google that and see where that is. I suspect these are Chinese batteries and they have been brought into another European country before being shipped into the UK. Anyway, let's get them home. Oh, more compelling evidence. Customs declaration. You don't need that for UK to UK shipping. That's the batteries and as we can see from the burst packaging, there's a pin there. That's going to be the charger. Come back to the charger later in the video. I'm going to open that up and have a look at that. But let's have a look at these. And there we go. 9900 milliamp hours. Aye, right. And straight away, the weight feels a little light. If you remember back to that first video on how to spot fake batteries are done, the weight is very often a giveaway and of course the weight limits the capacity because a lithium ion battery has a sort of top line currently power density. So obviously if it's lighter you're getting even less potential for storage power. Oh and there we go, there's a, another spelling mistake. The Ultrafires had sheaf life, these have got shell life. Superb. Says it's got short circuit and overcurrent protection. I'm going to bust one of these open. We'll check that. I highly doubt it. But um, let's get them into the charger. So, I've charged these overnight and I've charged them on a slightly different program from what I used in earlier videos. Previously, I would only charge to 4.1 volts, but these have been charged all the way to the maximum 4.2 volts. And I'm also discharging them on a slightly different program. I'm using the NICAD program as that allows me to set the cutoff where I want. So I'm taking them right down to 2.5 volts, which is more in line with what the manufacturers would use in their tests. So, if anything, these are getting an even fairer test than I've done in previous videos. 591 milliamp hours was the best performing battery. These are quoted at 9,900. I mean, that is just pathetic. And that's why I found it hard to be unbiased at the start of this video because I knew they were going to be terrible. These claims of high capacities like this, I mean, if it's much over 3,000 milliamp hours, it's just not possible. Anyway, let's pull one of these apart and see what it is. I'm quite curious to see. Is it going to be a smaller battery in there with some ballast for weight or is it just going to be a terrible quality wind like the Ultrafire? Let's have a look. And so that is the batteries. Utter crap. But what about the charger? Well, coming out of the packaging, it looks like pretty much every other cheap generic charger. It does appear to have four individual charging channels with separate indicator LEDs. So I put some cells in it and it did seem to charge them okay. So it does seem to work, but it does slightly overcharge. It runs the cells right up to 4.26 volts rather than 4.2 which is the maximum stated for these cells. That might still be within tolerance though. Most manufacturers will state 4.2 volts plus or minus 0.05. But remember, that's for a properly made 18650 lithium ion cell, not these poor quality GTF and Ultrafire and stuff like that. 
And also, if you consider, chargers like the AccuCell deliberately cut these off at 4.1 volts to try and preserve battery life. So it does become a bit more of a margin, running up to 4.26. It could reduce the life of the cell over a number of charge and discharge cycles. Once inside the charger, I spotted a couple more things I didn't like. The mains wire they'd used was really thin, a lot thinner than you would get on pretty much any other device or mains cord in the UK. And to make matters worse, one of the connections for the mains input was really badly soldered. That could come apart in use, so that's just not good at all. And looking at the circuit board, it does actually have four physical separate charging channels, but overall the quality is just poor. In a couple of places, you can even see where near short circuits have been created due to poor soldering, so for me it's just a big no-no. Now the mains plug, that's another big bugbear for me because I've seen this typed many times before on eBay purchases and stuff coming from China generally. It's completely moulded and it says 13 amps on it as if it's fused, but there's no fuse holder. So I cut the plug open in slices and 100% it is not fused at all. Now I'm not an expert, maybe one of you can correct me, but I'm pretty sure that that's illegal, at least in the UK. So. If I was forced to use this charger, at the very least, I would cut that plug off and put a proper fused plug on. But personally, for me, I just wouldn't trust this charger, especially if you're using it in the house unattended, and especially if you're using it with these terrible quality cells, you know, GTF, Ultrafire, and so on. For me, there's just too many avenues for things to go wrong, especially with no fuse in there to offer you protection if it does. So all in, the charger's gash, the cells are absolutely gash, they've got nowhere near the capacity claimed, no protection circuitry as claimed, they don't have the right amount of material in there to make even a good 2000 milliamp hour cell, never mind 9900. I mean that sort of capacity just isn't possible in the 18650 size with current technology. The big manufacturers, I think it's Panasonic especially, they're only really pushing 3400, 3500 milliamp hours. So I've said it a million times, if it's anything much over that and they're very cheap, you've just got to avoid. Another thing worth saying, they don't state any safe current draw level for these batteries. Now, my charger uses a maximum current draw of just two amps, but even at that, the cell temperature ran up to 24-ish degrees. That was with an ambient temperature of just 12 degrees. So that's quite a big jump. I wouldn't like to see what would happen to these cells if a bigger current was applied. Now unless requested by you guys or I get the notion, I probably won't test any more of these 18650 cells for a wee while. I've got a whole pile of laptop scavenge cells that I'm going to test and get through for a future project. But if there's any specific battery or vendor you want me to review, just say in the comments and I'll see if I can take a look. But the point is, once again, if you're seeing batteries, and I mean any batteries, not just these 18650s I'm concentrating on, that are dirt cheap and quote stupid capacity numbers, they are 99% of the time going to be absolutely terrible. Just avoid. Just to underline this point, one of you guys commented on the last fake battery video I'd done that this was old news, and it is, that's completely correct. However, just in the last couple of weeks, a friend messaged me a picture of his uncle's vape mod that he was using. He was having problems with it and lo and behold he had ultrafires fitted. So people are still using them, they're still buying them. So it might be old news but it's still relevant. If you don't believe me you just need to check the number of these still for sale, the numbers sold on websites like eBay and the huge number of vendors selling this absolute crap. Anyway, any comments or abuse, fire it in the box below. I love chatting to you guys, so long may that continue. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe to the channel. As I record this, we've hit 150 subscribers, and I know in the world of YouTube that isn't much, but for me, for my own reasons, it's kind of a big deal, so I seriously appreciate it. Until next time, stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next one.